America's inbred. In comparison to the rest of the world, the USA isn't a very inbred country, but that doesn't mean there's no problem areas. Most famously, Alabama. But not just Alabama, but 70% of inbreeding happens in rural areas of the southeast. And to pinpoint that a tad more, the southern region of the Appalachians. You would think the more people there are, the more chance there is of inbreeding. But that's not quite right, because it's heavily affected by isolation. Not only is this area poverty stricken, making the access to transportation difficult, but the terrain in the area is not easily manipulated, making pocket towns. When families settle, they're less likely to leave. Thus, interbreeding in the community is more common. The Whitaker family of Odd West Virginia. <laughs> Also, do not think inbred equals bad people. These people are very kind and very loving. Think more of inbred equal people in a bad situation. And now, quite possibly the most famous inbred family of all America, also in the Appalachian region, but this time in Kentucky around Troublesome Creek, they used to be known as the Blue Foo Gates, mainly for one obvious reason. Their skin is blue. They moved into Kentucky in the 1800s, and if the incest wasn't enough to make them shun from society, their blue skin was making them less and less social. As they retreated from the outside world, the blue skin became more common. But not all of them had blue skin, just most of them. It was caused by methema globinemia, causing the blood to appear brown, which caused the skin to appear blue. Benjamin Stacy was the last known of the Fugate family, still living. Though there are still ancestors of the Fugates in the South, none of them have blue skin, and none of them are traced. But if you're white and a carrier of this mutation, while living in the US, there's a pretty good chance you have some linked ancestry. But for a pretty apparent reason, people don't go looking to see if that's part of their lineage. Editing photos. Though seeming like a relatively new occurrence, this has already been normal for hundreds, and if we want to take paintings from prominent figures throughout history into consideration, thousands of years. It's been known that world leaders of the not so distant past would remove people that fell out of favor with them, or in Kim Jong-un's case, people he's had executed. But photo editing has been used for less heinous activities throughout history as well, such as post-mortem photography. In the early stages of picture taking, it was more expensive than the average person could really consider buying. But the post-mortem pictures were taken as a trend, to have a keepsake of your loved ones, and was really the only good excuse for someone of little income to spend weeks worth of money on a single photo. Obviously, you don't look the same after you die, and instead of your appointment, it would take time. While you kept your loved one's body in your house, it began to break down, requiring makeup and on many occasions, photo enhancing. That way, the last memory of your 18-year-old child doesn't have his eyes sunken in, and his skin doesn't look dried out and sucked of life. In this time, death was a lot more normal and was expected to happen at home, surrounded by family, so keeping that body at home wasn't really that abnormal. But getting away from dictators and death, this photo was one of the first notable edits of a photo, all the way back in 1846, where a negative picture of five monks was seemingly thrown off by the look of the fifth, so he got manipulated out. 30 years later, it was a regular occurrence. Take this picture in 1878. Using the more effective, gelatin silver photo process, young people lived through hard times, causing them to age quicker, but photo manipulation got to keep the best version of them around. Soon, most photos were enhanced to create a better product for the customers. Because why take a pic at Johnny's looking like this, when you could take a picture at Jimmy's down the street, wait an extra day for editing, and look like this? It happened in the 30s, in the 40s, in the 50s, and as long as humans have been around making images of themselves, they've been changing their unsightly features to make them more flattering. Even George Washington and Abraham Lincoln. I guess the real lesson here is, if you're going to edit your photos, don't leave the original laying around for some random person to find and expose you. The Power of Propaganda We're all too familiar with the propaganda in the East, displayed for their own citizens, hypnotized into watching and hearing what the government informs. Some would even say they're brainwashed. And the worst part is, they don't even know what's happening. And while people here are thinking that of other countries, other countries are thinking that of yours. Each side acknowledging, yeah, well at least it's not as bad as theirs though. Propaganda is more than just telling history from your side. It's normal to have a pledge to your country. When people gain citizenship, they'll recite it, or maybe even display it during government events. ...in the school each day in the good American way. The US isn't the only one that has one, but it has conditioned kids by making it normal to pledge your allegiance to the country every morning for the first 18 years of your life. It may sound normal to you, but if we heard kids had to make a pledge every morning to North Korea, we'd feel so bad for the propagandized nation, or maybe the military entertainment complex. The US military gives out money to entertainment organizations to be portrayed in a positive manner. They pay for the salute at the beginning of sports games. They've paid to look good in music videos. If you play as the US military in a AAA game, the developer received a nice check to be written into the campaign as the heroes. Even the movies you watch with armed forces, they got money to make them look good. Because if you want to use any of the military props, the movie has to be approved. It's more shows and movies than you would think. Star Trek, Top Gun, Black Hawk Down, Apollo 13, Godzilla, Iron Man, Iron Man 2, King Kong, I Am Legend, Transformers, even the Wonder Woman movie from last year. And the list goes on. There are over 400 movies sponsored by the Department of Defense. If we heard that movies in Russia were military funded, we're talking about how they're being controlled into thinking who the good guy is. But in the US, 
it's perfectly normal. The true power of propaganda lies in its undetectable nature to its victims. And I'm not saying all propaganda is evil, some is actually helpful. But by tapping into your emotions with catchy slogans, images, and selective information, it's important for you to consider if you're making decisions based off the truth or the propagandized truth. Five interesting stuff. Number five, seahorses, unlike most animals, mate for life and find one partner and stick with them. Most mornings, they wake up to the dance with the love of their life. During mating season, this dance includes passing on the babies from the female to the male, making male seahorses the only animals in existence where the father is the animal that gives birth. That poor sucker. Number four, bee bearding is a competition where people try and see how many pounds of bees they can actually put on their bodies. I have no idea how they do this, but it's actually pretty heavy to hold. In 60 minutes, the most ever held on a single body was 140 pounds. And yes, this is well over the amount of bees needed to kill a human. Number three, the most expensive piece of jewelry on earth, named the Hope Diamond, is thought to have come from India, and in 1666, was bought by a French Jim Merton. He got it up and sold it to King whatever number this is in 1792. Then it was stolen and cut again, but the biggest piece swapped hands from millionaire to millionaire until it was donated to a museum of natural history in 1958, where it remains today. Number two, a new time-slap feature on Google Earth lets you see the development of the world. This is Dubai, a relatively new city, growing from the 80s up until today. And number one, the easiest color for your eyes to process is green. That's why it's used for stoplights. Red is actually one of the hardest colors for our eyes to detect, but against the green background of so much nature in most areas, it's easy to see. But not only is green the easiest for us to detect at long distances, but it's also the color where we can see the most shades of. And it's why phosphorus greens are used in night vision goggles. And to top it all off, green is actually the safest color for us to stare at for long periods of time. So it doesn't really matter what your favorite color is, you're evolved to have the strongest relationship with the color green. And I'm sure it's pretty apparent why. Time out. Commercial break. Only 7% of you guys are subscribed. Help me change that. 92.4 of you guys. Subscribe right now while watching the video. That way you never miss one of these. Also, feel free to join the Discord down below. Alright, commercial break over. America's deadly past. If you know anything about the past, you know people were just trying their best. Oftentimes, they didn't know the real effects of their everyday products. Most popularly, lead paint. And if you live in a home made before the 80s, you likely live in a house that was painted with it at some time, since it wasn't banned until 1978. Unless you live in a poor neighborhood, because the laws don't really care about the poor. But it's mostly only dangerous when it starts to peel, and that usually just happens in high friction areas. Areas like windows, doors, floors, porches, stairways, cabinets, and more. But the worst case scenario is how it negatively affects the development of babies and toddlers if they put it in their mouths. So as long as they don't eat it, they're good. Oh yeah, lead has a sweet flavor, and the sweet receptors in the baby's brain are like cracked to the babies, so they just couldn't get enough of that lead chip candy. You see how this could be a problem. Now that the babies are covered, let's go over to the mothers. And luckily, there's an array of products to choose from. Like the arsenical lotion, which if we can see from the package is absolutely harmless. If you don't like the lotion, you could also use the arsenic wafers. That way you could just eat it instead of rubbing it on you. But hopefully they advertise the kind of sketchy side effects of arsenic poisoning. That is, pain, diarrhea, vomiting, dark urine, dehydration, vertigo, delirium, shock, and death. All that to get pale skin. I don't know if it's worth it, but to some, it must have been. Seeing as they use arsenic, mercury, and lead in beauty soaps, face powders, eyeshadow, and pimple cream. I don't really know why they saw deadly chemicals as cure-alls, but it seems like they were racing to see who could die the most painful and drawn out death. At least they had cool things, like glow-in-the-dark watches that may or may not have contained radium and tritium. Luckily, being close to smaller amounts of radioactivity is only cancerous and most deadly if you're around them for longer periods of time. But unluckily, lots of plates were glazed with uranium and the uranium glazed jewelry that was so popular is now deemed the iPhone of the age and drinking glasses and radioactive water for the drinking glasses. Man, they poison their own water. Just, just, just leave it alone. And that's not even mentioning the asbestos, which they knew was dangerous, but I mean, at least it gave us the attention. If you or a loved one was diagnosed with mesothelioma, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Mesothelioma is a rare cancer linked to asbestos exposure. So if you're wondering why people used to pop out babies like their life depended on it, and this is not to mention poor hygiene, disease, powerful pesticides, and the rampant pollution before hippies came about, and those are just a few reasons why you just had to keep making babies. Because if you want to have two kids, you gotta have eight. To make sure a couple of them stick around long enough to at least see their fifth birthday. Top 5 Rare Photos from History Number 5. This is Eugene Wideman. But what's rare about this is not the photo, but the video following this. Eugene was convicted of conspiracy, kidnapping, fraud, robbery, murder, and resisting arrest. Thus, he was sentenced to death. His method of execution just happened to be the last public execution by guillotine. And we actually have footage of that date from June of 1939 when it happened. For obvious reasons, the entire clip won't be shown here. Number 4. This is a pic dropped to the installation of the first air conditioner in 1902. This one though was not used to cool the air, but to dehumidify it. This was placed in a printing press warehouse, so the press would stay dry enough to use at all times. Though, the cooling effect was a nice little bonus. Number 3. This is the Eureka building in Chicago in 1920, displaying the effects of firefighting in extreme conditions. This actually still happens today if it's sub-zero while hosing down a fire, but this occasion just happens to be one of the oldest photos of this occurrence. Number 2. This student is Elizabeth Eckford. At the age of 15, there was a car full of 8 new colored students to attend a previously all-white school in Little Rock, Arkansas. 
She was approaching the school when the school body started shouting slurs and braiding her just for coming to their school. This woman actually came out later and apologized and said she doesn't hate blacks anymore. When Elizabeth arrived at the doors, the National Guard showed up to deny her entry. Later that month, the very same guards were back but to escort them inside the school safely this time. They were known as the Little Rock Nine. And number one, this is the construction of the largest American built statue. We do have the Statue of Liberty in New York, who was made by the French and shipped here, and the Pegasus and Dragon in Florida, but made by China and shipped here. But this statue, named Our Lady of the Rockies, was built in 1985. It was made into four pieces, in part by a retired engineer from the largest American mining company, Anaconda Copper. The pieces were airlifted in by the National Guard, it would probably be a lot more famous if it wasn't in Montana. But if you're going through, be sure to stop and visit a large American made statue. 5 Interesting Stuff Number 5 The deepest voice on record a human has ever had And not only that, it's also suspected it's the deepest voice a human can get, which actually sounds pretty similar to breathing in sulfur hexafluoride, which is also known as a deep voice gas. Luke, I am your father. Number 4 When a little kid is giving you a nice smile, they're actually giving you two smiles, because their adult teeth have yet to replace their baby ones, meaning they're smiling on the outside and the inside, and I find that sweet and disturbing. Number 3 the rarest dog in the world is Norwegian Lundehund. In Norwegian, Lundehund translates to puffin dog, which is a pretty fitting name, seeing as this is the only dog bred to hunt puffins, though they don't hunt them anymore, and their puppies usually cost around two to three thousand dollars. Number two, the way you may see in your own grocery store, an Asian aisle, or an Australian aisle, if it's not already obvious, other countries have an American aisle. And you know what? That looks like the end of one of my grocery stores, so I say it's pretty accurate. And number one, the hottest temperature and the coldest temperature in all the known universe are actually in the same place, and that place just happens to be Earth. On August 13th, 2012, the the CERN Hadron Collider in Geneva, Switzerland recorded a temperature of 9.9 .9 trillion degrees Fahrenheit. They achieved this temperature by accelerating lead ions at 99% the speed of light and then making them collide. The coldest is when physicists at an Italian institute chilled atoms to minus 459 degrees Fahrenheit. So while humans aren't the center of the universe like they once thought, we definitely do a good job of making ourselves feel like it. Top 3 Things Predicted Happen By The Year 2050 Aside from things we can see developing right now, like self-driving cars and delivery drones, some big questions and discoveries could develop in the next 30 years that alter our existence immensely. Technology is the fastest growing industry, and as more knowledge becomes accessible, there are more opportunities for human advancement. But let's start out big. As we grow in knowledge, we grow in knowledge of what others might have access to. Like most of extraterrestrial search has been done through radio telescopes, seeming like the most convenient way for tracing life. But as we grew past radios, more evidence for alien activity has been discovered. Energy being a limiting factor to how advanced a civilization can get. It's now suspected manipulation of your home star is the way we can find aliens. Like Dyson spheres. If they have panels surrounding their stars, creating irregular light activity, or even have the power to move their stars in an unnatural manner, it's easier to see this activity from farther away. And by 2050, we could possibly have the technology for even more advanced abilities than we do right now. And we just can't imagine them without the infrastructure of that new technology. AI enabled robots. Right now, AI is still kind of an exclusive technology, limited in its most advanced abilities. But once it becomes as accessible as an app, its learning will be exponential. Right now, it helps hedge funds beat the market, diagnose heart disease before humans can even tell, and driving a small portion of our vehicles. But imagine machine learning not limited to the training of humans, machines discovering on their own, inventing without aid, and accidentally killing all of existence? If it has access to all knowledge, and even has understanding of things our eight brains can't comprehend, who's to say its most obvious diagnosis to itself is the hindrance from humans? Killing them all would obviously leave it to live longer, and if it ends up evolving too much, Earth can become a prison. Not to mention, it would just die when the sun gets bigger. With all the resources in the universe, it could just upload all of its information onto a chip, create a self-replicating rocket, destroy the Earth to make sure we can't come looking for it, and scour the universe for materials to keep repairing itself, in turn, becoming as immortal as the universe. We don't have the brain mapped out, but to the hint at all-knowing AI, it could just map it for us. We can just as easily use the very same chip the immortal AI used to leave Earth to just upload our brains and live longer here, possibly even forever. And that's not even taken into the account the kind of medicine that we'll have access to. If you may be more traditional, you could just use AI nanobots to repair your own cells. That way you only live up into the thousands of years, instead of infinitely. But just remember, all this is pure speculation. We don't know what we don't know, so any bit of new big information could just make all this irrelevant. Top 5 Rare Photos from History Number 5 This is Barry the Monster Dog, who deservingly earned that name by killing over 40 people as he worked for the German death camp in Treblinka. When he was given the command, he would attack without mercy, but he only ever attacked when he was commanded and he was trained to only harm people in prisoner clothing. Number 4 This is former President Franklin D. Roosevelt at the age of 2 in 1884. It's important to remember in these times, the word girl just meant young child, 
regardless of gender. And all kids wear dresses until potty trained due to the difficulty of children undoing their pants. Number three, a picture of Margaret and Anne Frank on the beach in the Netherlands. We often see her in her professional photo, or maybe even working, but not usually doing regular kid stuff. And can really show you how quick things can spiral under propagandized conditions. Number two, this is the first photo of a living animal to ever be uncovered. This faded picture of a goat dates back to 1842 and was taken in the cattle market in Rome and now sits in an exhibit in New York alongside pictures like the 1850 horse-drawn wagon and the 1891 lion, tigers, and dogs circus performance. In number one, the inside of the FBI's fingerprint storage warehouse in 1944. This was an 8,000 square foot National Guard armory. The FBI had recently went from tracking American citizens to tracking anyone they can get information on, making all this new information hard for them to store. Daily work here was 10-hour shifts at 6 work days a week, and with everyone working together, they had the power to process 35,000 fingerprints daily, which can now probably be done in a matter of a few minutes.